Yeah, exactly. You got one. I enjoy it. Good to see you. to have both um, Governor Bruce Rauner as well as First Lady Diana Rauner with us here tonight. And it's a very special evening because we're celebrating Vigilia and the tradition of Vigilia and specifically Apuata. So we'll learn a little bit more um, about this as we um, go through the night. But at this point, I would like to invite our guests of honor, Governor Rauner, First Lady, please. Dobre Vietchor Polonia. It's an honor to be with you tonight, Diane and I. It's a privilege to work with you, support you, and help celebrate Vigilia. You know, Polonia, the Polish American community in Illinois, there is no more vibrant, more dynamic, more important community in the state of Illinois than Polonia. And there is no greater friendship, no greater partnership anywhere in the world for the people of Illinois than the people of Poland. And I, as governor, look forward to working with you to enhance the future so that your children, your grandchildren, all the children and grandchildren of the state of Illinois can realize the American dream. We all came to this country, the greatest nation on earth, for freedom, for opportunity, for democracy, for our families, for opportunity. And the Polish community embraces all the values that make America the greatest nation on earth. And I look forward to traveling soon to Poland for the first time in our lives. Neither Diane and I have been to Poland, but we are coming. We want to go with many of you, hopefully somewhere in the coming year. But this is the time of year we come together with family, with friends, to celebrate all that unites us, all that is wonderful in the world, loving each other, caring for each other sharing our values of faith and family and hard work. And it's a privilege for us to be with you. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Let me see now, let me, let me get my pronunciation. You guys correct me, I've been working on this. Vesowik uh, Shviont. Dziękuję, dziękuję. Let's celebrate tonight, God bless you. So at this time, uh, we actually would like to uh, break a Pwatek, and I would like to invite um, Father Pavel, and Father Pavel is from uh, the nonprofit organization Yashmin, 
and he will take a moment to tell us about Opuatek. Um, now, Father Pavel says he doesn't speak much English. I don't believe him, <laughs> but I am more than happy to, to translate if necessary. Moi drodzy, Opłatek jest związany z naszą piękną polską tradycją, tradycją, która łączy Polaków przy stole, przy stole wigilijnym. To jest moment również podziękowania sobie za ten cały rok, również przebaczenie wzajemne, to co było złe. I mam nadzieję, że to spotkanie, które jest tutaj, pozwoli nam i dziękować, i przeprosić, i mieć nadzieję na piękną wspólną przyszłość razem. So Opłatek is a long tradition in Poland and the breaking of Opłatek means that during the Vigilia uh, we basically share the Opłatek to wish each other well for the um, next year during the holiday season but also to forgive each other for anything that we've done during the previous year and to have a new start. So I would like for everyone to take, there's a Płatek on your tables. Um, if you don't have that a Płatek, um, please do take it out. And we will have some time later on to share um, officially a little bit more time. But I think this is such a great tradition uh, from, from, the, uh, you know, from Poland. And I'll, I'll take this opportunity actually to, to um, break the Opłatek with Governor Rauner and First Lady. As all of us are wishing each other all the best for the holiday season as well as the new year, whatever you know your political beliefs may be, we want both sides to come together to have that balanced budget so that Illinois can be taken seriously again and so that Illinois businesses can work. So at this point, I'm going to introduce our sponsors. First of all, again, in no particular order, Paul Rindak from Northern Insurance. And I ask that each sponsor come up here. Ukash Fuksa from Fuksan Korshin. Ari Spike from RA Spike. Now, Ari, Ari is not here with us. He's attending a wedding, but he sends his best regards to everyone. Thank you, Ari, for helping us with this as well. Tom Startek from Startek Glass. Marek Kowalczyk from Idea Furniture. Piotr Leszczyk from Piotr Leszczyk CPA. Hubert Czeromski from Troy Realty and Bogdan Bosak from Chicago Metal Supply. And I don't think Bogdan is here with us tonight because he actually had his, um, he couldn't be in town for um, this evening. So um, obviously, gentle, uh, gentlemen, um, as well as myself, thank you for putting this together. These are the individuals who make this um, possible. But these are also individuals who are very supportive of the governor and again his efforts and I will say this over and over again I sometimes feel like I'm a broken record to finally get Illinois business working again. We really need to get that done and it just doesn't happen with one person but it has to be all of us making it clear that that this budget needs to happen period. So thank you thank you gentlemen. Also, during the holiday season, we don't want to forget um, the nonprofits and other individuals in need who need who have um, financial needs from a financial perspective, as well as um, even in terms of volunteering and donating time. And we have two organizations that we want you to remember during the holiday season. Now. 
the, um, this committee, this, as I call this sort of an ad hoc Polish American committee, we will be reaching out to these organizations to hopefully be able to help them financially or in other ways after this event. But I do want to introduce all of the, both of these organizations so that you have an idea where you can put support, who you can support, organizations that really help within the Polish community. So the first organization that I'm going to introduce is um, the Ad Advocate Lutheran General Hi Hospital Survivorship, uh, Cancer Survivorship Center. And specifically, I'm going to ask Dr. Hallmeyer to come up here. Now, this is a fabulous, fabulous organization that provides free services for cancer patients, and they don't even have to be um, uh, you know, patients of Lutheran General, but basically anyone who, who has been afflicted with this disease, whether they're fighting the disease or are survivors, they can get wonderful free services at this organization. So Dr. Hallmeyer, I'm going to ask you to tell us a couple of words about this organization, please. Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for inviting me. This is such a fabulous event, and good evening to both of you as well. Thank you so much for attending. So my name is Dr. Hallmeyer. I'm a medical oncologist up north here at Advocate Lutheran General Hospital, and we're actually part of the largest hospital system in Illinois of Advocate. We have 11 hospitals that we represent. And at our northern campus, we built the first freestanding survivorship center for our cancer patients, which I'm actually the medical director for. And it was a dream of mine when I came, very much like many of you here in this room from Eastern Europe. I'm actually from East Berlin. Grew up just a stone's throw from the wall um, and studied medicine in Berlin, Germany, and then came here for my training and got stuck with this fantastic state and this fantastic country. Um, and have been able to realize many of my dreams and now would like to pay it forward for my patients. And so being in the location that we're at in northern Chicago, we actually have a very, very large patient population that is Polish. Um, and many of those patients are recent immigrants. They have many, many social issues, language barriers, etc. And I have a fantastic team that's here with me tonight, including a specific Polish concierge that was hired specifically by our institution to serve our Polish patient uh, population. And so what we have literally right, right across the street from my office is a cancer survivorship center that we founded now about four years ago with the idea that maybe we will see about 500 patients a year. That was sort of our five-year goal. And I'm happy to say that this year we served over 3,000 patients. So we have by far exceeded our wildest dreams. It's a center of healing and a center of faith. It's, uh, you know, we're a faith-based institution, and for us it's very, very important that we take care of the patient in a very holistic manner. I'm very, very good at making my patients sick by giving them chemotherapy and ultimately typically uh, having very good, big success in getting patients to a curative outcome. My area of expertise is melanoma and breast cancer, and we've made significant strides in the last 10 years. Uh, in curing many of those patients. But curing cancer is not just getting chemotherapy. There's many, many other things that come as part of this diagnosis. It's a life-changing event for all of our patients. And so what they receive in our center started with five classes, things like yoga and stress reduction. Now we have our own social worker. We have personal counseling. We have over 70 different classes that we can offer to our patients. Um, our budget has exploded. We're completely funded by philanthropy. So all our services are free, completely free to all of our patients. And as has been mentioned, we are not um, limiting our services to the patients that are seen at our institution. Any patient is welcome in our doors. And not just patients, but caregivers, family members as well. And so uh, we have, this all started with a free wig boutique as well. We gave out over 130 wigs to women last year, which is tremendous. Some of these wigs can cost up to $400, which is an immense expense for many of those patients that have medical bills, you know, things I'm sure that you're dealing with quite a bit with the medical reform that we're all facing. And so, um, you know, I'm, I'm extremely excited that I'm invited to an event like this for you here um, to bring to you and to your attention the need that we have in serving patients that are not just facing a life 
threatening diagnosis of cancer, but also often facing significant social issues, um, marital, sexual concerns, um, financial concerns, all the things that come with a cancer diagnosis. And so having a freestanding cancer survivorship center on campus here is extremely meaningful and keeping it free and having the financial support to make those things happen for our patients is extremely vital for the existence of the center. Thank you so much. And John Wojciechowski, I know you're somewhere here. I, I think you wanted to make a presentation to Dr. Hallmeyer. Thank you, Anya. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Copernicus Foundation, the Board of Directors, our Chairman, Hubert Jaromski, our Executive Director, Greg Kobolinski, myself, uh, Executive Vice President, um, I'd like to just mention a couple words. Uh, as most of you probably know, some of you uh, don't. I, I get a question occasionally. Uh, we are a nonprofit, and uh, we are, uh, as board of directors, we, uh, we serve uh, pro bono. That's a legal term. I should not be using it. But uh, gratis is probably a, a better term. And um, uh, we uh, are, uh, this is the premier uh, location, cultural location of the northwest side of Chicago. Um, frankly speaking, due to our good management and uh, our ability to uh, stand up to uh, today's uh, economy, we are very uh, glad, happy, and privileged to have every one of you here tonight, especially the governor and the First Lady, the first citizen of the state of Illinois. Um, the governor has been very kind and visited us here during the Taste of Polonia. And I would hope that I would see many more of you during the Taste of Polonia. That's our major fundraising to keep this center uh, going. Um, I don't have to remind you, it's, um, a lot of work has been done to this center, and it is the uh, cornerstone of the uh, northwest side of Chicago as a cultural center. We hope to maintain it. One thing I also want to uh, add, it is not only that we serve Polonia, we also serve all ethnic groups that are present, that want to be here, uh, and we underwrite them. Uh, to this year, to date, we probably will be close to around $300,000 that we underwrite in terms of underwrite meaning forgiveness of funds. Sometimes we have to collect. Thank you for your, for your consideration. That's very kind of you. Uh, to make my story short, on behalf of the uh, Board of Directors they've decided and the Copernicus Foundation, I have a check to present to Dr. Hall for $1,000 from the Copernicus Foundation. Thank you so much. You may think that $1,000, what does that buy us for? I can tell you that that buys us about 100 weeks that we have specially contracted. It buys about 40 classes for our survivorship center. So this will go a very, very long way for the patients up north. Thank you so much. It's our pleasure to have you here and many of you distinguished guests. Uh, no, nobody has been mentioned by name, but you know who you are and especially the governor we are very pleased to have you here for the second time we hope to see you here many more times we need your support and we support you likewise thank you and madam likewise thank you so the other organization that we want for you to keep in mind is yashmin or in, in, um, in uh, English, I guess it would be Jasmine. And Yashmin is an organization that is run by the Jesuits that helps developmentally disabled individuals. And they're actually selling hand handmade ornaments out uh, in the hall if anyone is interested, if you haven't seen that before. But I would like for um, some individuals to come up here from Yashmin to tell us a little bit about the organization. Um, and I, I do think that that um, ju just so that they can kind of give you an idea of what the organization does in more detail. Thank you, Anya. Um, dear Governor Rauner, uh, First Lady, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, my name is Bartek, and I'm one of the volunteers 
uh, of the Integrator Group, Jasmine. Uh, I would like to start off by thanking you for the invitation to be here with you and celebrating the Polish Vigilia. Um, and on behalf of our uh, children, families, volunteers, and friends, just wanted to tell, take a moment and tell you a little bit about our group. Um, for the past nine years, Jasmine has functioned as a community and non-for-profit organization. Uh, it was founded by Father Piotr Kochanovic in 2007 and current, continues presently under the leadership and care of uh, Father uh, Pavel Vitoň. Um, Jasmine brings together families and disabled children and volunteers at the Jesuit Millennium Center here in Chicago. Uh, we integrate and share resources that contribute to the growth and development of each child. Our goal is to also assist in connecting families together as a way to enable them to pull their abilities and strengths to overcome social barriers and keep them that keep them struggling in isolation. We do so uh, through our monthly group meetings, uh, winter and summer, summer weekend trips to Wisconsin, um, summer long uh, recreational camps, uh, parent volunteer uh, learning sessions about each child. Uh, we have our own puppet theater that we do each year a couple times. Um, and other special events. Um, Jasmine believes in finding and further developing um, the potential hidden in every child. Uh, many of our children are um, participating in Special Olympics and they're very, very talented athletes. And uh, our group welcomes all people regardless of race, uh, nationality or religion. And we truly value the Polish American and other communities we get to work with. And uh, before I depart, just wanted to give you a little bit, um, a small gift from our uh, organization. So thank you for your time, everybody. Wow. 